NASA's spending billions on Orion while SpaceX's Crew Dragon has already proven it can do the job for a fraction of the cost. Leading aerospace experts, including Mars Society founder Dr. Robert Zubrin, are now publicly questioning why we're not using Dragon for lunar missions. At 9.5 tons versus Orion's 26.5 tons, Dragon is lighter, cheaper, and has a flawless operational record. The technical path exists. The hardware is flight-proven. But acknowledging this means confronting an uncomfortable truth about where NASA's money is really going. Let's dive right in. Here's what most people miss. NASA handed SpaceX the Crew Dragon contract back in 2014. Over a decade later, it's not just flying, it's dominating. While Boeing's Starliner stumbles and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus faces recurring thruster failures, Dragon has completed dozens of missions with a near-flawless record. This isn't experimental hardware anymore. This is the most reliable spacecraft America has. SpaceX didn't just build one Dragon. They've developed multiple variants. Crew Dragon for astronauts, Cargo Dragon for supplies, the U.S. deorbit vehicle to safely bring down the ISS, and Dragon XL configured for lunar gateway resupply. Each variant proves the platform's versatility. So when Dr. Robert Zubrin says Dragon could replace Orion, he's not speculating. He's reading the data. Let's talk mass because in spaceflight, mass determines cost. Dragon weighs 9.5 tons. Orion weighs 26.5 tons, nearly three times heavier for the same mission. Zubrin's assessment cuts deep. Dragon is not just cheaper than Orion, it is much better because it is much lighter. Every kilogram sent to the moon requires fuel. More mass means more fuel, bigger rockets, exponentially higher costs. Orion forces NASA to use the space launch system at over $4 billion per launch. Dragon could fly on Falcon Heavy for roughly $150 million. The economics aren't even close. Despite weighing less, Dragon offers 50% more internal volume than the Apollo capsule while adding only 20% more mass. It's efficient engineering that Orion can't match, and the difference costs taxpayers billions. Multiple credible lunar architectures using Dragon have been proposed by respected aerospace engineers. Dr. Zubrin and rocket scientist Homer Hickam outlined Gray Dragon in the Washington Post. Launch a modified Crew Dragon and Lunar Lander together on Falcon Heavy, send them to lunar orbit, transfer to the lander for surface operations, then return home in Dragon. No SLS required. A more refined approach pairs Dragon with Starship as an orbital transport system. Dragon handles Earth-to-orbit transport, what it already does perfectly. A modified Starship variant ferries crews between Earth orbit and lunar orbit, functioning as a space tug rather than a lander. Dragon remains the trusted crew vehicle throughout, already human-rated and proven. This addresses Starship's biggest challenge, human rating a vehicle still in early testing. Why rebuild what already works? One genuine challenge stands out. What happens to Dragon while astronauts explore the moon? The spacecraft would need to wait in orbit for days without crew, and current Dragon isn't designed for extended autonomous operations. Three solutions exist. First, fly two Dragons, one for ascent, one for return, expensive but uses existing hardware. Second, modify Dragon for longer uncrewed periods, requiring recertification and delays. Third, launch a Starship variant as a crew loitering depot. Dragon docks in low Earth orbit, and the depot provides power and thermal control while waiting. Even flying two Dragons costs dramatically less than one SOS launch. Every option remains cheaper than the current plan. Dragon was built for low Earth orbit, where Earth's magnetic field blocks dangerous radiation. Beyond that protection, astronauts face cosmic rays and solar particle events. Orion has specialized shielding. Dragon doesn't. Adding radiation protection means integrating materials like polyethylene or advanced composites. That adds weight and impacts performance. NASA is researching better materials, but incorporating them requires significant engineering and testing. It's achievable, but not simple. Life support needs upgrading too. Orion sustains crews for weeks through recycling systems. Dragon manages about a week. Artemis missions lasting two to three weeks would need expanded storage and upgraded recycling capability. But here's the key. 
If Dragon only serves as a return vehicle, while Starship handles deep space operations, it would only support two astronauts for a few days in lunar orbit. That's within current capabilities. The challenges shrink dramatically when you optimize the mission architecture. Orion's European service module provides powerful engines for translunar injection and lunar orbit insertion. Dragon's Draco thrusters handle ISS rendezvous, but lack the thrust for deep space maneuvers. Dragon would need an additional propulsion stage or extended upper stage on Falcon Heavy. Re-entry presents another hurdle. Lunar return means hitting Earth's atmosphere at nearly 25,000 miles per hour, 40% faster than orbital speeds. Orion's heat shield is purpose-built for this. Dragon's Pika-X shield was originally designed for lunar and Mars returns, but is currently optimized for orbital speeds. The shield is robust and might handle lunar return with minimal changes. But might isn't acceptable for human spaceflight. The heat shield would need reinforcement, testing, and NASA certification before carrying crew from the moon. SpaceX itself has moved beyond Dragon for deep space. The company canceled Red Dragon Mars missions and shelved propulsive landing plans. Everything now focuses on Starship as the vehicle for lunar and interplanetary travel. The logic is clear. Starship hauls 100 tons to the moon. Dragon manages one ton. For sustained lunar presence, capacity matters. Starship version 4, currently in development, will double payload to 200 tons with 42 Raptor engines generating 10,000 tons of thrust. SpaceX is building the heavy lift future Musk envisioned. Dragon becomes the reliable Earth-to-orbit shuttle while Starship handles beyond. But that's SpaceX's long-term strategy. It doesn't answer whether Dragon could provide a faster, cheaper path to the moon while Starship completes development. Since 2010, Dragon has maintained an exceptional operational record. The Demo-2 mission in May 2020 returned Americans to orbit from U.S. soil after nine years. Flawlessly. That success came from over 700 Super Draco engine tests, nearly 100 parachute tests, and countless simulations. When a Dragon exploded during a 2019 static fire test, SpaceX identified the valve failure within weeks, redesigned the system with burst disks, and completed follow-up testing. Compare that response to recent events. Northrop Grumman's Cygnus XL experienced thruster failures just two days after launch, delaying ISS arrival. NASA certified Dragon for human spaceflight because the data supports it. Thousands of hours of review, testing, and validation. That's not marketing. That's engineering confidence backed by flight heritage. Northrop Grumman was so impressed by SpaceX's reliability that they contracted three Falcon 9 launches for their own Cygnus spacecraft, a competing aerospace contractor paying SpaceX because they trust Falcon 9 more than alternatives. After Russia's Ukraine invasion cut access to Antares components, Northrop turned to SpaceX rather than wait for domestic alternatives. The partnership revealed something fascinating. Falcon 9's lift capacity enables Cygnus XL to carry more cargo than Dragon to the ISS. That's not because Cygnus has superior design, it's optimized differently. Cygnus burns up on re-entry as waste disposal, needing no heat shield or return fuel. Every kilogram goes to cargo. Dragon, designed for safe crew return via splashdown, carries that mass penalty. But that capability is exactly what makes Dragon valuable for lunar missions. Astronauts need to come home. Multiple viable pathways exist to use Dragon for lunar missions. Each has different trade-offs, but all cost significantly less than current Artemis architecture. Engineering challenges are real but solvable. Flight heritage is proven. Reliability data is strong. The question isn't technical capability, it's institutional willingness to acknowledge alternatives. This is exactly why the Dragon question matters. NASA has a proven, flight-tested spacecraft that could return Americans to the moon faster and cheaper than the current plan. Dragon's track record speaks for itself. Dozens of successful missions, flawless crew operations, and a reliability that competitors can't match. The engineering challenges are real but solvable. The cost savings are undeniable. The breakthrough isn't the technology. It's recognizing that commercial spacecraft can deliver results that once required entire government programs. SpaceX proved the model works. 
Dragon is already flying. While Starship develops into the heavy lift future, Dragon could be the practical solution getting us there now. Here's what's coming. Starship version 4 will double payload capacity to 200 tons. Artemis continues toward its first crewed lunar mission. The next two years will show whether NASA embraces flexible alternatives or commits entirely to one path. Either way, the pace of lunar exploration is accelerating. What's your take? Should NASA use Dragon as a lunar backup while Starship completes testing or go all in on Starship? Drop your opinion in the comments below. If this deep dive analysis delivered value, hit that like button. It helps us reach more space enthusiasts. Subscribe to Space Hub for more breakdowns on the technology reshaping space exploration. And turn on notifications so you never miss when we cover the next big development. The moon is closer than most people realize. The hardware exists. The question is who moves first and how. Thanks for watching Space Hub, where we go beyond headlines to show you what's really happening in space.